Good afternoon and welcome to episode 748 and the topic today might be controversial based on the comments I had on the post I posted earlier about this. The topic today is stop dating, sorry, stop, stop being his mother. Stop dating projects, start dating real men. I'll explain that in more detail and give you some tips, guidance and some warning signs, I hope. Um, before I do that, let me choose myself so you know who I am, why I'm doing these talks every day. My name is Barry Selby, in case you hadn't figured that out, or figured that out, or re- figured that out already. I've got the right teeth in, I think. I am a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, when I can get my words out clearly, and relationship attraction expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is why I do this and what inspires my work, as well as what started these talks over two years ago, which were originally called, well, eventually called, <laughs> they changed, Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. Today we're episodes, uh, episode number 748. I've done a lot of these. And last Sunday, because last Sunday was Father's Day, I did talk about how women tended to marry their fathers. So this is going to flip the script a bit. Let's talk about men and mother figures on both sides and how to avoid it, how to, on both, yeah. I'll jump into it. Let me just start. So, um, Ladies, stop mothering him. One of the challenges that happens, and I'm going to have to be very self, um, what's the word? Not exposing, it's not quite the word. Um, transparent, that's a good word I use, about some of my own experiences because I was definitely a protagonist in this as well. So, where to begin? Let's put it this way. A lot of women have a tendency to attract into their relationship partnerships man boys or just boys in men's bodies and that's an archetype or a mindset or a way of being that some men have because they never actually grew up on a level of emotional maturity and energetic maturity they may have grown up physically they've got a dick now that's bigger than it was when they were a kid they've got belly hair they didn't have before when they were a kid they've got more um accoutrements of life but they haven't grown up internally so they actually still like man boys so they're boys in men's bodies and so some women, not all women, but some women will tend to attract them more easily than other, other men. And I'll explain that in a moment, why that happens and what you can do differently. On the other side of the coin, or the other side of the script, is some, some men haven't actually grown beyond the point where they still feel like they want to be around their mother energy. Maybe they grew up with a mother that was very standoffish, or a mother that was never there, or a mother that was maybe even suffocating. Let me go into that one for a bit. So... As I spoke about on Sunday, when I was saying about how women tend to marry their fathers, it was Father's Day, and in honor of that, we'll see. I spoke about how for most of us, men and women, we inherit and we learn our beliefs about love and relationships that are programmed subconsciously from our parents when we're very young. So let me say that another way. You're running a tape in your mind that you can't control, that is implanted from when you're very young about how love should be. Is it scaring you yet? It might want to explain more what it's about. So as adults, we may believe, well, in fact, we do believe that we're in control, we're in charge, you know what we're doing, we know how to choose our partners and everything else. Meanwhile, whilst we're being fooled like that, it's almost like the matrix in a way, that we're walking around as if we're adults doing what we think we're doing, but we keep attracting to our life partnerships, relationships that mirror back to us a lot of stuff from our childhood we didn't resolve. And mirror back to us people that remind us of our relationship our parents had or our parents had with us. It's because of that belief we took on when we were very young that's actually overriding our adult choices. So if you are noticing you're attracting people into your life, partners into your life, that are reminding you of your parents, this is why. And I don't mean reminding them because they look like them. I mean remind you of them because of the behaviors, because of the programming, the beliefs, the way they do things that will just go, I, I know they're from somewhere. Yeah, look back at your childhood. It's quite likely it's because of your parents. I, I'm realizing I'm actually, uh, mm. <laughs> I'm realizing in kind of ways I'm an aberration on that one because I didn't have that one in this 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 context. I just had a, I had one relationship in particular where I ended up being mothered by my partner. That's and that was okay. That's the other piece. Thank you. And if I talked about it, it would show up. So a part of what is also going on is the, these man boys, these men who haven't developed into their full expression, is they haven't found why they're here. 
or say another way they don't know what their reason for being is for me the journey for this started well it was in bad a couple of bad relationships but it really hit home for me when i did this studies where back in 2007 where i started discovering what it meant to be a masculine man and i'm not going to go too deeply into the masculine feminine piece because that's for another time and i've spoken about it many times before and it's also in my book and some other books i can recommend but it meant that i started realizing that i needed to find my why in life why is in why what is my reason for being what is it that i am here to do because up until that point I would try to make my partner that. And for most people, and I know for myself, that doesn't work. In fact, what happened was in a couple of relationships, because I was still occupying a space of being, well, partly being the nice guy and being an undeveloped masculine man. I had a lot of emotional maturity, but I hadn't developed that sense of self, that sense of direction, that sense of clarity that was going to change all my relationships from that point forward. And so what happened was I was in a couple of relationships where the women end up, and it's interesting because both these women had kids, not me, they had kids, but I ended up feeling like I was being treated like a son. Now, I'm not going to say who started what, <laughs> but I'm very aware that the paradigm wasn't working. In both cases, these women were starting to like outpace me in almost like a maturity level because I was starting to downgrade somehow. It wasn't conscious, it was something subconscious going on. And I'm looking back and going, for me personally, I had a wonderful relationship with my mother. Uh, I lost her, in lost her in 2012 when she passed away. But it was a very clean, it was, she was the matriarch of the family. And I respected her and appreciated her and was closer to her than my dad. That was part of my upbringing. So it wasn't like I was seeking that out. I know that I was a, I have, I have a, I'm aware that I have a fairly, I believe, a whole, a whole and complete relationship with my mother. Um, just reflecting on when she passed, how I felt. Yeah, it, just reviewing myself, doing a little self-review, I believe that was okay. However, what I wasn't doing was only my true calling, my purpose, my, my reason for being, my maturity, so to speak. And so, a lot of men out there don't have clarity why they're here. They just They may be doing a job, they may be running a company, but they're not living their calling. And so part of them is not yet matured. Part of them is still playing a very young game without knowing it. So ladies, when you're out there meeting somebody, a question I can recommend you talk about, maybe not the first date, but early on in the relationship, is ask them, what is your purpose? What is your calling? What is your reason for being on the planet? And if it's simply to say, well, to have a family and kids, that might be true, because in some cases a man's purpose is to have a family. But it's more likely that he would be speaking on something that's going to be a social or environmental or planetary change direction. It may be to feed the homeless. It may be to change a societal condition. It may be some other thing that is more impactful in the world that he may never complete in his lifetime, but that's the direction he's heading in. If he has something like that going on, he's now in his masculine heart because he's, he's finding his calling. And generally speaking, he's woken up to his maturity, so he no, won't be a man boy anymore. And you'll actually find you can have a better conversation and a better relationship because he's not going to be the, a son you don't want, so to speak. So that's one piece. And speaking for myself, through the journey I went through since 2007, my work keeps evolving, but my purpose is very clear. And that's what actually fuels me so I don't even need a relationship, actually. And that's another part, by the way. When a man already knows his calling, a relationship is not a need or a fixation. It's an addition to what he's already doing. And it's actually much easier to be in a relationship because he's not focusing his purpose on top of a relationship, which is double trouble. He's actually focusing separately, clearly. So that's, that's, one, that's one part. Um, there was another piece that was coming through. On the other side of this, for the ladies, if you haven't figured out yet how to be with a masculine man, you may still be, without realizing it, choosing men that don't step up to that level. Now, if you don't, if you want to be a mother the whole life to these boys you date, go right ahead. Don't watch this video. It won't, it won't help you. But if you're ready to, to um, matriculate through, to graduate beyond that, here's the, click, the key. I mentioned already about how you want to find a man who's got clarity and direction and focus in his life. This isn't just about take, take, take and running a company. Oh, bit more about that. Some men think they've got it down because they've got the nice house, the nice car, the jewelry, and they're bigger than other guys. Like they've got more ego, they're more control. That's not what I'm talking about. That's actually more boyhood stuff because that's playground bully, being better than, screw everybody else, I'm coming first, my way around the highway. doesn't matter how old they are, it's still a 10-year-old mindset running in there. A man who's got a calling in life is here to serve and is actually a man who respects other men because there's no competition. 
it's a focus of his mindset, his heart, that will take him wherever he's going and you actually love to be on the ride with him. This shift is a, is a thing that's actually fairly new because a lot of men don't have this understanding yet. Quite a few men do, thankfully, and some of the men who I hang out with are on the same page, we understand this. So ladies, if you want to really get into a healthy relationship with a man that is absolutely um, not the mothering style, first of all, you may need to look at your past history with your father and your past relationships with your parents to see if that was clean because that may be influ influencing without you realizing your choices. And secondly, get clear about what you're really looking for. Again, finding a man who's got clarity and direction is a good step in the right direction. It also is a reminder that if he is not stepping into that place, if you've been married to a guy for 20 years and he hasn't done this yet, I highly recommend some books he could read, some courses he can take, and some teachers he could work with. Not with me, I have people I could recommend. Because what you want is to encourage him to step out on his own, in his own truth, so you can have a healthier relationship. It isn't the end of the road if you've been married to this guy and he's still playing man boy, he can still mature. All men can, when they choose to. But it is a key thing that you need to, to I'm going to say enable him, that's not really the right word. You need to be willing to nudge him, inspire him, push him gently in the direction of his goals and dreams and visions so he can actually get it for himself. Don't do it for him, that's not the job. But as a, a smart woman, a mature woman who wants a mature man, partnership, relationship, having your space freed up so he can be fully in his space is a way to do it in a healthy way. As a friend of mine posted, I put, I put a post out early today saying I'm going to talk about this at five um, on Facebook. And she responded about how there are a lot of alpha women who've been running companies for so many years or being a boss, being in charge. They don't necessarily know how to detune it when they're in a relationship. This is part of the work I do with my clients to help them remember this because, yes, a man can occupy the space big enough so that she can let go of it. That's one thing I talk about in my book. I'll put a link in the comments. You can check out the book, by the way. That... When we are embracing a masculine, we're around a woman who's trying to occupy that space, and I would say trying to, because you've been trained to think that's the way to work. We hold the space firmly so she doesn't need to anymore. What happens is when a woman is in that space, what, what can happen, doesn't always happen, is that she starts to realize, oh, he's got it. I can trust him. He's the rock I can stand on, lean on, hold on to. I can relax into my feminine. That's what women can then do. It's not always easy, but it's the way that it can work most effectively. Now what I said before about these women who are bosses and run the show and they're in charge I dated some of those so I, I know what it feels like when I was not in the right place because I definitely did it the wrong way so I can speak from the pain experience but I also know from the right experience how to be with them I have a lot of friends of mine clients peers coaches that I work with who are friends of mine who are in their divine feminine in their strength but they're not doing alpha anymore because there are so many so many women who don't yet have a clue how to be in their feminine because they think it's a weak place to be. And I have news for you ladies if you think that. Being your family is the most powerful place there is. That's why my work is driven to support that, to serve the feminine, to be a teacher, a guide, a leader, a supporter, an encourager of women being the feminine because that's the future of our planet. Anyway, I'm often, that's a rant I'm going off, so I'm not going to go down that path. But a reminder to you that you can, in fact, have what you want in a relationship, especially when you choose the right partnership, but you've got to start with being the right person to choose that partnership. And in my work with my clients, that's part of the work we do together. I'll put a link in the comments besides the book. I'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me so you can find out what that is for the ladies. Um, I don't see if there's anything else before I jump off. I've got... Make sure I cover all the points I was going to cover. This is the thing about working without a script or a bullet points or a, or a cheat sheet. I'm going to review what I said and hope I didn't miss anything. I mean, it's always tomorrow. I can always do another talk tomorrow. But this is what I'm going to talk about here is to really give you the input to know that it's possible. Um, and in this con okay here's one piece I knew there was a piece sitting out there in this context of the of w m women mothering boys or mothering men which is also the flip of what I said on Sunday about how women date their fathers is it takes two to tango meaning that it's not their fault only so please if you're in this conversation in this context have some challenges don't go ahead and blame the other person you are equally accountable because you entered into that relationship so be responsible yourself by either leaving that relationship if it's not working, choosing to take your own space back if you're a woman into your feminine, a man into masculine, if that's your natural uh, um, inclination, and create the vacuum in which the other person can step into. 
So don't compensate, don't overdo it, don't keep doing what was happening, it won't fix it. Talking about it won't do it either. It's occupation of the right space, the right energy, the right vibration that creates the right dynamic for the relationship to work. There's a lot of rights in there. It was very righteous. <laughs> I hope that made sense. That was an interesting piece that just came through. But the truth is we have the opportunity to have incredible relationships. The biggest one is always the one that starts inside. That's where my work keeps to going more and more is about the relationship you have with yourself that then changes the relationship out there. It's always about the self. And I mean that from my heart. So if you want to reach out, I'm going to put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me and I'll put a link in the for my book as I mentioned that. Um, if you have a partner, a male partner, you want to get some help about this area, message me and I'll send you some information of books and teachers I can recommend because that's not my speciality. I know enough about it, but I don't teach it. But I have some people I can recommend. Um, I think that's about it. That'll be enough for now. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, this is my daily commitment to serve, to express, to share with you out in the world. Well, through the, through the format of Facebook. This is a Facebook Live. It goes onto YouTube as well. I'll give you those links. So if you want to join me, you find me at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. You can watch me in my in the moment. Yeah, something like that. If you haven't, if you wanted to replay, if we missed the other broadcasts I've done before, you can find them on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby author, or on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. All my social media is my name, by the way. Um, so subscribe to my YouTube channel, Barry Selby, and on there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. So they're all on YouTube, they're also on my business page on Facebook, so you can watch all my replays, all 740 plus, plus this one, those places. If you want to join me live and interact, if you want to interact with any of my broadcasts, you can type in comments, thoughts, questions underneath, and I can respond at any point later on. Um, that's the wonderful thing about Facebook, it does notify. If you have any questions about this particular topic, please let me know either here or by Messenger. Again, I'll put links in the comments for my book and, in, and for also a discovery session. You can have a complimentary clarity conversation with me. That'll be in the comments as well. Um, with that, I think that's it. I'm back in tomorrow again, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Yeah, sorry, I have an event I'm going to, but I'm gonna, I'll make it work. 5 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow, right here on my personal page. I look forward to seeing you then. Take care of yourself and uh, follow your heart. I'll speak to you again tomorrow. Bye.